Hello, I'm Larry Denton. I'm the director of the Talbot Historical Society. We're here today to tell you a little bit about your society and to tell you what we're up to. Uh, on my left is Ginny Caputi. Ginny's uh, one of our uh, members of the board of directors. She's also a chair of our uh, exhibition committee. Uh, on my right is Dee Dee Wood. Dee Dee is the manager of our Tharp Antique Shop. You'll hear more from her in a bit. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about why we started this channel. We uh, want to call this the Talbot Historical Society channel. And um, Jenny and I got together and kind of brainstormed about what we could do. We do lectures down here once a month and we have our museum shows, but we also thought it would be interesting to go out into the community of Easton and the surrounding areas in this county and interview people. Um, some of the people that have historical knowledge, have antiques knowledge, and kind of bring um, information and interest to the, to the community at large about what we do at the Historical Society, how history affects people's lives, careers that are built on it, people's collections, people's interests, that kind of thing. So we have a lot of really interesting, fascinating things planned in that for the upcoming year. Um, we think you'll like some of our content, absolutely. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what and historical society is and, and what they do. Uh, all historical societies, or at least the better ones, uh, have three pillars. Uh, pillar one uh, is a museum. You must have a museum uh, to tell your story to the public. Uh, the second pillar, or leg, is an uh, exhibition space. And you need an exhibition space so you can focus on specific aspects uh, of a story. Uh, we did a uh, exhibit here on women of Talbot County. Uh, very, very successful. Uh, so that's the, that's the second leg. The third leg is one needs a research center, hopefully with a library. And you have a research center, uh, so researchers, uh, general public, or people who are interested in some specific aspect of the county can come and delve deeply uh, into uh, a given subject matter. So that's, that's the nature uh, of a historical society. And we're completing uh, our thir third leg just now. Uh, we uh, hope in mid-May to open a uh, research center, and I'll speak about that uh, in a little bit. So Larry, you've been director here for how many years? Five. Five years. <laughs> And I wanted to talk a little bit, in that five years I've been alongside with you here, there's been a lot of changes and I wanted you just to talk about some of the things that have gone on here in the past five years that people may not be aware of. Well, the, the very first thing we did uh, was balance a budget. Uh, that uh, seems mundane, but, it's, but for a nonprofit, it's simply central to uh, uh, what, you're, what you're about and what you can do. Uh, the second thing we did, uh, we created a museum, a new museum, and we made the decision to make a modern museum. Modern being it would be interactive, we have a touch screen, we have uh, large smart TV screens uh, that every 12 seconds are rotating a, a new image uh, from the county's past. Uh, so that was, a, that was a really big deal. Uh, we used to own an auditorium up the street, second story of the uh, historic Methodist church up there. We sold that uh, in December uh, three years ago, and we took some of that, the funds from that sale, and we renovated the historic Neal House and made this our exhibition space. So here, we are sitting in the portrait gallery, uh, but to my right are two uh, large and one small galleries that we use to have rotating uh, exhibitions. Uh, usually we have uh, three a year. Uh, Ginny Caputi, as I mentioned earlier, is chair of our exhibition commu uh, committee. And Ginny, why don't you talk a little bit about the, our upcoming uh, exhibit? Okay. Well, our, our next exhibit is going to be about uh, Talbot County and the people from Talbot County that participated in World War II, and not just the soldiers, but what was going on here at the time. And we've got some really amazing information. I don't know if anybody knows, but there actually was a POW camp here 
uh, where the Easton Airport is, and there were actual German soldiers that were brought over here. And Oxford had a, a booming uh, boat yard, and they uh, fixed a lot of the boats. They repaired them during the war. There were lots of other businesses that we'll have in our exhibit that, that talk about what was going on here at the time. So that will probably be open, we're hoping for the middle of May sometime, but you know, we'll have all sorts of information so you will know when it's open. And we've had a wonderful response from the public of people who want, we have four gentlemen who served that are in their 90s and they've been interviewed and we have videos of them that we will be showing. So I hope you'll all come. Four videos sounds really, um, really interesting. Did you go and sit down and interview them in their... Actually, two of them, uh, the Library of Congress has uh, a project where all veterans are allowed to be uh, videotaped and they're, they're keeping them at the Library of Congress. So if you know somebody that wants to be uh, interviewed, there's a woman here who's living um, in Easton who actually went and did these interviews. And she um, did all the paperwork, which is a lot. Um, to get them in the Library of Congress. And you can actually uh, listen to the, a lot of the other ones um, because they're all online. So you can hear lots of them. The other two, we actually went and visited them and one of the gentlemen is sharing his um, art collection with us, which I think is fascinating. He, when he came back from the war, he had been a pilot, he was injured and he only had the use of his hand. And so he has a finger painting from 1945 wow. that he did that he's going to let us exhibit. So there's lots of neat Exciting stuff. Things. Yeah. It's a fun, fun time. Uh, this June is the 75th anniversary of D-Day and uh, we hope to make a big splash uh, 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 during, during uh, that time. Uh, another new thing that happened to us here is about three and a half years ago we moved our antiques uh, shop uh, from the Mary Jenkins house to uh, where it is now. And uh, we, uh, we hired a new manager uh, to run the shop uh, full time, and uh, that's Dee Dee Wood. And Dee Dee, it would be uh, uh, useful if you would uh, tell folks uh, what we're up to and what we've done very new, very recently, and how uh, okay. that could impact everyone. I definitely have some exciting things to share. Um, I like to tell people that they can call me Modern Dee Dee now because we have tried to be a little more modern with selling items. And I, we tell Larry, if you can't beat them, join him. So we've gone virtually online to sell some of our antiques and items. Uh, we do have an eBay store now. You can reach us at Tharp House. That's how you find us on eBay. That's our, our tag. Our store name is Tharp House, easy to find. Um, we sell a lot of the higher end goods that are easy, easily shippable, but you're also welcome to shop it locally as well. And we have something brand new that we're really excited about and we'll segue into, you brought one with us today. Um, we are selling our historic uh, photos. Larry will talk a little bit about those later. We're selling those on our Facebook page. We just created a brand new shop for Tharp Antiques. Um, the Facebook page is Tharp Antiques and Decorative Arts. And it's, um, you can reach us there on our Facebook page. And under one of the headings is the word shop. Uh, we're also selling something called an Easton album. We could get into that. Um, I'll let you talk about the Easton album a little bit. We're selling a lot of local books, uh, Frederick Douglass content, that sort of thing. And we're also selling tangible goods out of the store a little bit at a time. Uh, it takes a lot of work and we've just started it. But we'll have lots of different things from Tharp on there too. So any way that we can get out and reach you and let you know what we're uh, choosing and, and selling in our store will we'll be on eBay and our Facebook page. Another thing I wanted to throw out really quickly, we will be at the Home and Garden Show for Easton this year, April 6th and 7th. That's a Saturday and Sunday. We have some really exciting things going on there this year. Uh, we have two board members here at the Society, Tim Roach and Bob Shanahan, who are experts in antique appraisers. They'll be there on Saturday, April 6th for, from noon to two, appraising antique items for free. So if you have an item, come in and see me. We'll talk about how you can get into the show and, and have them look at your item and appraise it for free. 
We also have two lectures going on that weekend, fourth Art Antiques. One is Sensational Silver Show. We have a gentleman named Logan Kerr, who is an expert on silver, coming to speak at that Home and Garden Show. And um, I will be doing a lecture on American glassware and the history of American glass. It's really interesting. A lot of glassware that you see has originated here in the United States. So come down and see us again. It's the home show for Easton, April 6th and 7th. And we'll be putting blasts out about where it's located and how you get to it. But we're really excited. It's our first year to be in it. And hopefully um, we'll see a lot of you down there. Lots of change here. Uh, lots new happening. Uh, that's just a, a, a brief sampling of uh, what's coming up this year. Now, before we go any further, um, you have brought some artifacts with you. And I think we should touch upon those. Um, tell us what you've brought and what's going on with these. Well, listen, uh, most folks uh, think of a museum and collections as just uh, static, uh, old stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and nobody seems to focus on the story uh, behind these uh, uh, inanimate uh, objects. Uh, but let me talk about just two. Uh, this is a woman's shoe uh, from the early part of the 19th century. And it's, a, it's an old, uh, somewhat attractive shoe. But the story here, folks, the story here is how small the shoe is. People in America of that era were ill-fed, they had no vitamins, lived to their mid-40s. Uh, a woman average height was about five foot, uh, probably, weighed less than a hundred pounds. Uh, that's the story. That's the story behind this uh, shoe. Uh, we have uh, a whole collection of women's clothing, including about a dozen uh, 18th and 19th century wedding gowns. Uh, the, the waist of these women, we've held them up here like this, this around. It, it just is incredible how small the people of that era uh, were. Uh, this is a bottle from an Easton pharmacist named Roberts, and it's uh, cod liver oil, and this dates from about 1850. Well, in, in that era, uh, cod liver oil, uh, here it is, it cures coughs, colds, asthma, consumption, and general diarrhea. Uh, and folks of that time uh, felt it would uh, uh, cure arthritis. I mean, it was just used uh, uh, by everyone. So fast forward a hundred years when I was a young kid growing up in a little town called Bainesville, Maryland. My mother would give us this stuff once a week. You'd have to gag it down. It was just terrible. So this bottle has a story too. And the story goes into the 21st century. So when, when you're through watching this uh, a dynamic program, uh, go sit in front of a Google and just Google cod liver oil and see what pops up on your screen. You will be amazed mm -hmm. that in 2019, this stuff is used uh, all over the world. Artifacts. Wait, still they used all, today? Still used yeah, today. Okay. Uh, artifacts, they all have a story. Well, it has all the good stuff that fish oil has in it. I mean, we all take right. fish oil, right? That's right. <laughs> and taking the pills or, or... Yeah. Yeah. So, Larry, under your directorship, we have a project called Project uh, Rewind. And I was wondering if you could explain what it is, how it came to be, and what it has to do with Facebook. Sure. Uh, about six years ago, uh, when we got involved, we had a new director named Kathy Hill. <laughs> And Kathy was uh, searching through uh, our major photograph collection. Uh, it's by a fellow named Holiday. And uh, she just randomly uh, picked a couple of the uh, uh, photos. Actually, they were uh, the negatives uh, that we had stored. And uh, she printed them out. And uh, hold that up for me just a second. And this is what she found. Uh, Here's a negative when we printed it. It has all kinds of uh, lines through it. This negative was probably 70 to 80 years old. This photograph is uh, unusable. Hold that one up mm -hmm. for me. Here's another one where uh, mildew has gotten, gotten on the uh, uh, 
the, the, the negative. And, and when we printed it out, you can see uh, it, it's just full of uh, mildew blotches and it's unusable. Uh, so, thank you. Mm -hmm. So what we did, uh, we started uh, uh, hurriedly uh, checking out software and we found a program uh, where you would buy a scanner and use this software program and you could take the negative, an undamaged negative, and scan it. And once you scan it, you've digitized it. And once digitized, that photograph is saved forever. So we started uh, trying to find grants uh, to help pay for this. Uh, we got a major grant from the Midshore Community Foundation here that got us started. Uh, we set up uh, a couple of scanning uh, workstations and in the last five years, uh, this is <laughs> I think really our most remarkable accomplishment. We've scanned 65 percent of our negatives, uh, almost 60,000 uh, individual uh, uh, scans. And uh, well, what's that produce, you should ask? Well, here's a scan photo right here. This is one of our most famous uh, photographs. Uh, you know that Harold Baines from St. Michael's has just been uh, inducted into the uh, uh, Baseball Hall of Fame. He's the third gentleman from the Eastern Shore to make it into the hall. But prior to that, there was a farm boy from Trap, Maryland, and a, uh, a young kid from Sudlersville, Maryland, in Queen Anne's County, uh, that had incredible baseball careers uh, and made it to the Baseball Hall of Fame. And we, in our collection, we have an, an almost unique picture of the two of these young boys in the same photograph. And here it is. This is the Easton uh, baseball team of 1923. And here is a Frank home run Baker. He played third base for the Philadelphia Athletics. He was on the $100,000 uh, infield of uh, the famous manager, Connie Mack. And here's Jimmy Fox from Sudlerville, a young Jimmy Fox. We have them both in the, <laughs> in the same uh, photograph. Folks, uh, that's the kind of thing we've been, uh, we've set about uh, trying to save. And that's important because 50 years from now, uh, when we're all gone, and a new group of, uh, of young people or a new group of researchers or a new group of both baseball folks are looking uh, for this image. Bingo! There it is. It's cataloged in a computer program and if you go to our catalog and say Hall of Fame baseball players, bingo! This comes up. Uh, this has been a remarkable accomplishment. Uh, as I said, our director Kathy Hill has taken us on to uh, manage it. Uh, she has uh, devoted thousands and thousands of uh, hours to this effort. Uh, and uh, we have given her every award we have to give. <laughs> and uh, she's even been recognized by the uh, Tauba County Council uh, with a citation for her uh, incredible work. So folks, uh, what, what are we about uh, here? We're saving the pictorial history of Tauba County. And that's just a little taste of what we have behind closed doors that we'll be sharing in different shows and things. So it's interesting, yeah. public interest. Speaking of public interest, we have you sitting here with us today. Um, like I said, we have a lot of different ideas about who we'll be interviewing and what we'll be doing. But we have to have our director first because we want to introduce our society. But we also brought you here because you're interesting and you have something that you do <laughs> that a lot of people don't realize, which Larry is a prolific author and his subject matter is the Civil War. And I'll just let you take it from there. Tell everyone what you've been up to with these books, how many you have, what's going on. Talk a little bit about your, your authorship. Well, it all started when I was a young boy uh, growing up in this little town called Bainesville. Uh, my grandfather, uh, his dad had been in the Civil War. He was uh, a first sergeant in the uh, 7th Maryland Infantry. Uh, and actually he was present at Appomattox. So when I was a young fella growing up, uh, the, uh, the men who would gather in the smoking room after uh, supper 
uh, they would sit and talk about the Civil War. And as a young kid, uh, my older brother and I both got very interested in the war. So when I went off to college, took a couple of uh, courses about the Civil War, became intrigued. And uh, my principal professor of history said to me in my senior year, he said, now Larry, you're from a historic Maryland family and you deserve to go out and find out something about the war in your state. So uh, in the early 80s, I began to do some research on the secession crisis. That is the year of, of political turmoil that led up to the outbreak of civil war. Uh, so uh, I thought I was going to do it for a year or two. I ended up uh, studying the secession crisis for 33 years and produced three books. And uh, you should say, well, that's not many books after 33 <laughs> years. <laughs> but uh, I had a full-time job at that point, too. But my last book uh, was called Unionist in Virginia. Uh, this book deals uh, with the... Uh, very controversial subject of could the Civil War have been prevented? And in this book, uh, I try to make the case that it could have been, it certainly should have been prevented. And uh, it's been a fun book to lecture on. Uh, I gave a, a principal lecture at the uh, Virginia Historical Society a couple of years ago uh, that was uh, coolly received. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's a uh, it's been a fun, uh, it's been a fun uh, time and a fun project. Uh, I have retired from research and writing at this point. You're an author, but you're also a musician. Yeah. So can you tell us how you became a musician and, the, and discuss with us the fact that you're a director of a band? Well, um, by happenstance, again in this little town of Bainesville, uh, I was born to a, a mother who's a musician. She was just a marvelous a, a musician in a little country town. She had three sons. Uh, she uh, actually forced all of us to uh, learn to read music, to master an instrument. And uh, mine was trombone, and I was in the uh, marching band of my college uh, through my sophomore year. So it stuck. Uh, my dad played the mandolin, and I picked it up and uh, learned uh, to play a little bit. Uh, in later years, I took uh, lessons from a classical mandolinist, and I actually uh, was the first chair of the second section in the oldest mandolin orchestra in the nation uh, called the Tacoma Mandoliers. We played black tie, we played at the Smithsonian, we played all over Washington, uh, pretty high-end uh, stuff, and uh, I got pretty tired of <laughs> playing <laughs> classical <laughs> music. <laughs> and so uh, when I got over here and retired, I found a group of, 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 fella, of, of men and women uh, who played music of the 20s and 30s. Uh, five Foot Two um, is a, one of our standard songs for me and my gal, If You Knew Susie, uh, those kind of songs. We play all over the county. Uh, we play at uh, most of the uh, uh, retirement homes in Easton. We play at Londonderry a couple times a year. We play at William Hill a couple tam times a year. Uh, I ended up uh, being the music director, uh, I guess, by default. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but here's a fun, we, with the, the band played at our fundraiser last fall, and uh, just, and here we are. Uh, we have uh, nine pieces in the band, and uh, we're uh, all retired. Uh, we have uh, two uh, fellows that sing tenor, have uh, trained uh, very nice voices, and uh, it's just it's just a ton of fun. Well, I think that that is just kind of the taste of um, the Historical Society, and we definitely want to thank uh, Larry Denton, our director, for showing up today and talking a little bit about his human interest side of um, the Historical Society and uh, the faces behind these buildings that you see when you drive down Washington Street, um, hopefully not on your way to the hospital. The final comment I would make is that nonprofits like ours are uh, 
driven by and really run by volunteers. Uh, Jenny Caputi is a, a classic example. She spends uh, lots and lots of hours here. When we're putting on an exhibit, uh, it's just a handful of people that do the, the lion's share of work. And uh, so if you're, if you're interested in history, or if you're interested in just meeting some fun people, uh, come see us and become a volunteer. Um, we definitely want to invite you to come back and see our other shows. Jenny and I have a lot of really interesting guests planned um, for in and around Talbot County and uh, Easton. Um, we have a few surprises in store. We'll also be sharing some of our lectures out of our lecture series that we're doing this year. We have a few more we're doing this year, so we have some interesting and exciting things. But we wanted to thank you so much uh, for tuning in to Talbot Historical Society TV today. Thanks for watching. I came down from a mountain to the sea below Saw myself and the girl I love And I'm never going back, never going back up And this I 